All right, so we're going to continue with chapter six when we're talking about factoring. Okay, the section before this, we went over greatest common factor and a grouping. Now we're going to talk about factoring trinomials. Okay, we're going to look at factoring two different types of trinomials. Okay, we're going to look at easy trinomials and hard trinomials, is how we're going to kind of distinguish the two types. Okay. Easy trinomials, the coefficient on x squared is one, right? So there's just x squared at the beginning, right? There's not, there's not a number attached to x squared. Hard trinomials do have a number attached to x squared, okay? The coefficient of x squared is not one, okay? So here's how we're gonna do these easy trinomial steps. We're gonna do easy trinomials first, then we'll do hard trinomials. Um, the first step is we're going to circle the last sign. Okay, that's going to be the key, right? Circle the last sign. That's going to be the key. Draw your parentheses and fill in the x. Okay, so anytime you have an easy trinomial, meaning x squared is alone at the beginning, you can draw two sets of parentheses and put an x in these two spots. Okay, then you're going to ask what multiplies for the end number and add or subtracts for the middle number, right? So you're going to look at the last number and say, what can I multiply together to get the last number, but add or subtract together to get the middle number? Okay, so you're going to use the last number, multiples, um, sorry, not multiples, factors of the last number to add or subtract to get the middle number. Okay, so all of that will make sense in a second. But those are the steps that we're gonna follow. So this first example, okay, we have x squared alone, so we know it's an easy trinomial, okay? So here's my sign. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. Draw my two sets of parentheses, x and x. Now, look at your sign. If this is positive, this second sign, that tells you that the signs in your parentheses are the same. Okay. Let me use the same color. That tells you same sign. It doesn't tell you that they're both positive or that they're both negative. It just says that it's either or, okay? When you have a positive and you say, okay, I know they're the same, this first sign tells you what it is. If it's plus, then that means I have plus, plus. If it were minus here, that tells me that it would be minus, minus. First, the second sign, if it's positive, tells you, okay, they're both the same. Then you look here, that tells you what sign to use, okay? So now we need to think of the factors of 12, okay? Get to my stuff. Factors of 12 that add to give you eight, okay? So if you go over to the side and say, okay, 12. One and 12, two and six, three and four, okay? And since our signs are the same, Right, we're gonna think addition because we're gonna put two numbers here, add them together and get eight, right? So it shouldn't take you very long to notice that two and six, two and six would add to give you eight. And that's it, you're done. Okay, um, one way that I kind of like to check to see if I got the middle number is I like to go, okay, two times X is two X. And I'm gonna do that one more time. Two times X is two X, X times six is six X. And I, both of them are positive. If you add those together, you get a positive eight X, which is what you wanted, right? So I kind of, you'll see me do that a lot just to check to make sure my signs are right with that middle number, okay? Let's keep going. You look, three terms, trinomial, okay? 
easy trinomial because there's nothing attached to my x squared. I can automatically go both sets of parentheses, x and x. Then I'm going to look at my signs. This tells me that the signs in my parentheses are the same. This tells me that they're both negative, minus, minus. Okay. Then I'm going to go over here with 15. If you don't have to do this part, you don't have to. If you can think of the factors of 15, that will add to give you 8. Then just write them in, write 3 and 5. Will give you negative 8, right? So you have negative 3 times x. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. If you add those together, you get negative 8x, which is what you wanted. Okay. keep going so we can draw parentheses and our x's okay well now look this sign is not positive it is negative that tells you that the signs in your parentheses are different okay they are different so whenever we are whenever we put our numbers here and here we're going to add these up Right, one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative because our signs are different and we want that to give us negative four X, okay? So you can just go in and write positive, negative or negative positive. It doesn't matter where you put your signs, it matters where you put your numbers in reference to your signs, okay? So I just like to do plus minus and then put my numbers where they need to go, right? So we're dealing with 21. 1 and 21, 3 and 7, okay? We need to get a negative 4, right? Well, we're not going to use 21 and 1. 7 and 3, right? 7 minus 3 is 4. But I need to have a negative 4. So if I do negative 7 plus 3, I'll get negative 4. And you can always check that. Plus 3x minus 7x would give you negative 4x. So when your signs are different, you think subtraction, right? I said seven, oh, well, seven minus three gives me four. And then I just put the negative on the seven, right? When both of our signs were the same, we were thinking addition. So it was a little bit easier. And that would be your answer. Okay, look at this one. We would say our signs are the same. And both positive. And then we're looking at eight. Do either one of those add to give you three? Nope, one plus eight is nine, two plus four is six. This does not factor. We cannot factor it, so we write prime. If it does not factor, we write prime, and that is our answer, okay? So that is basic easy trinomials. Look at these, okay? On some problems, we have to factor out the greatest common factor first, and then we can factor an easy trinomial, okay? So like I said in the previous video, your first step always is to look for a greatest common factor, because if you can take it out, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier, okay? So if I'm looking at this guy, this one doesn't even look like anything that I know how to do, right? The easy trinomials say x squared and end in a number. This one has a four attached to x. And then it has a three as my first 
exponent, and then it ends with an x. So if I take out a 4x, right, what am I left with? I'm left with x squared plus 3x minus 18, okay? So I took out a 4x. 4x is your greatest common factor. Now look at the purple. The purple is an easy trinomial. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna factor that easy trinomial and 4x is just gonna come along for the ride. Okay. So I'm gonna look just at that purple and I'm gonna factor that. That's an easy trinomial. So I can go x and x. This is a minus, so that means my signs in my parentheses are different. Okay, so I can go plus minus. Thinking of the factors of 18, that will add to give me three. Well, six times three is 18, and six minus three is three. So I'm gonna say six minus three. Okay, go and check, plus six x minus 3x gives you positive 3x. That's what you want, okay? So this whole thing is your answer, right? So just one little step before we did our easy trinomial was taking out that greatest common factor. Okay, let's do it one more time. On this one, the only problem is that three right here, right? So this would make it a hard trinomial, but Obviously, easy trinomials are easier than hard trinomials, okay? So if we can take out a number, if we can take out three from our terms, that's just gonna make our lives a whole lot easier, right? Because this is now an easy trinomial. So our three comes along for the rod and we factor our easy trinomial x and x, our signs are different. Plus minus, factors of six that add to one. So we have one and six, two and three, okay? Well, three minus two is one, right? So three minus two is one. Okay, so on those two examples, just one step, taking out that greatest common factor and then doing easy trinomials, okay? And that is how we're gonna factor easy trinomials, okay? Now, we're gonna move on to hard trinomials, okay? So remember, you have the hard trinomials to factor if the coefficient of x squared is anything but one, and there's no way we can take out a greatest common factor to make it one, okay? The previous problem, we took out a three, and that made our leading coefficient one. So we just did an easy trinomial. But that's not always gonna be the case. We can't always take out that first number out of all three terms, okay? It's not always the greatest common factor. So here are the steps for hard trinomial. So you're gonna get what I like to call magic number, okay? That is going to be the first number times the last number. No signs, signs don't matter here. You're gonna take the first number and you're gonna multiply it by the last number. Then you're gonna list all the pairs of numbers that multiply for the magic number, okay? So you're gonna take that magic number and say what times what gives me the magic number? And you're gonna list all of those. Okay, we've already been doing that um, in our easy trinomials. Then you're gonna pick the pair that will get you the middle term and fill in the signs. And then you'll bring down your first and last terms and you're gonna factor by grouping. Okay, so we're actually going to manipulate this into factoring by grouping. Okay, so here's what I mean. 
Magic number first, three times five. That gives you 15. Let's list all the factors of 15. One times 15, three times five, okay? If you look, three plus five will give you eight, okay? You look for the two factors I will add to give you that middle term, okay? So instead of writing plus eight X, we're gonna write this. 3x squared, that didn't change. We're gonna say plus 3x plus 5x plus five, that also didn't change, okay? This piece is just rewritten with our two factors that we found, okay? But you know that if we added like terms here, we would just get back to this. That's very important. That will always happen, okay? So now we have four terms, 3x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus five. Now we're gonna factor by grouping because we have four terms, right? So we're gonna say first two and last two. We find the greatest common factor of each. Greatest common factor of the blue, is 3x, and we're left with x plus one. Bring your middle sign down, and you can take out a five from the pink, and you're left with x plus one. Remember your parentheses here should always be the same. If not, you are not correct. So that becomes one set of your answer. And the other set is everything else. Okay, so once you get to right here, it's no different than factoring by grouping, which we did in section 6.1, okay? Let's do another one, okay? Magic number. First number times last number. So we're doing three times 16 and that gives us 48. All right, so we're gonna list all the factors of 48 now you have a calculator, so just go down the list and say, okay, 48 divided by two and get 24. So two and 24, and then go to three, three times 16 is 48, four and 12, five doesn't go into it, six goes into it. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, all right, so just use your calculator on that. Don't make that a big deal, okay? Now look for the pair here that will give you 22, okay? This tells you that your signs are different, right? That does not change, those rules don't change. So I'm looking and I'm going, well, 48 and one, no. If I skip this 16 and three, no, that's not gonna be 22. Neither this one, 24 minus two, right? 24 minus two is 22. So I can rewrite and I can say, okay, three X. So I picked this one, three X squared plus 2x, I meant to do that in purple, plus 2x minus 24x, that gives you 22x, right? Minus 60, okay? Now you're gonna group the first two, 
Last two, greatest common factor, okay. What can we take out from here? We can take out an x and we're left with 3x plus two. Bring down our middle sign. I didn't stick with my colors, did I? We go, pink. Okay, eight goes into both of those, right? So we have three X, which is great. Plus, right, we took out a negative. So this time, this sign changes, right? It was negative, it becomes positive. Two, eight times two is 16. Check yourself. These are the same. So we get three X plus two x minus eight. All right, we'll keep going. Just a few more. Magic number is 24. So we're gonna list the factors of 24. Okay. And then I missed eight and three, didn't I? Three and eight. Okay. Now we need to think, all right, let's look at our signs. Plus, they're both the same, so we can add, right? We need it to add to give us plus 10x. So we're gonna pick four and six, right? Four plus six is 10. So if we have eight X squared plus four X plus six X plus three. Now we can group the blue and the pink find the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor of the blue is 4x. Get x plus one. Bring down that middle sign. The pink is three. And we get, that's supposed to be two x. All right, four x plus times two x is eight x. I missed it. Okay, these are the same. And then everything else. Okay. Keep going. Four times five gives us 20. One and 20, two and 10, four and five. Okay, look at this one. Our signs are different. Okay, so one of these is gonna be plus and minus, minus plus, whatever, some combination. It needs to give us 22. Okay, if you look for, shouldn't take you long. None of those will give you 22. Right, so this one is prime. We can't factor it. Okay. Moving along. Six times 12, that's gonna give you 72. Okay, I think I have these factors written out on a page somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab these. Okay, factors of 72. Okay. One and 72, two and 36, three and four, three and 24, four and 18, six and 12, eight and nine. Again, go to your calculator and just type those in. 
Okay, not a huge deal. Don't make that a bigger deal than it is. Okay, now 17. We need them to add to 17 and our signs are the same. Okay, and they're both gonna be negative because we need a negative 17. If you look, eight and nine, right? Eight plus nine is negative is 17. Make them both negative and you get negative 17. All right? I'll put the bigger number first. You don't have to do that, but okay. Group. I'm gonna take out a three X and I'm left with two X. That would give me six X squared minus three. I'm gonna bring down my negative. I'm gonna take out a four. So I'm left with two X minus three, right? It's minus because I took out a negative. So I flip the sign. I'm left with the same thing in my parentheses. So I get two X minus three. And then the other set is everything else. Okay, so you should be noticing a serious pattern, okay? That these go the same way every single time. You're doing the same thing every single time, okay? So we'll do one more just for good measure, 36. So one and 36, two and 18, three and 12, four and nine, six and six. Okay, our signs are different. So we need them to add to give us a positive five with different signs, okay? So you should notice four and five, right? Nine minus four gives you positive five. I'll put the bigger number first. So plus nine X minus four X. That gives me positive five X. Group, first two, last two. Greatest common factor of the blue is 9x, and you're left with x plus 1. Bring down that middle sign, take out a 4, left with x plus 1. Same thing in the parentheses, so we know we're good. x plus 1, 9x plus 4. There you go. Okay, so those are the same pretty much every single time of what you do. Find that magic number, find the pair that gives you the middle term, rewrite it into four terms, and then group. Okay, so that's how we do easy and hard trinomials.